uh, welcome to our Facebook Live tonight. So again, it's Thursday and uh, we're going to have your questions on nursing prioritization and delegation. And before anything else, I would like to uh, thank some uh, people who emailed me or sent me messages that, telling me that the Facebook Live has really helped them a lot prepare for their licensure examination and definitely pass also their licensure exam. So thank you very much for all of those emails, everyone. Okay, but anyway, again, everybody, thank you. And most of you are now in the comment section giving your comments. So hopefully you are ready for our four questions for tonight for prioritization delegation. And uh, today also, I'm really very happy because I received a very nice uh, voice message from one student appreciating this uh, Facebook Live. So Francis, thank you very much for your nice message today. It was really very inspiring. Uh, anyway, before anything else, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Mr. Alan Matus, and I am a nurse educator. I have been a nurse educator for almost 25 years, and I have helped students. I think uh, thousands of students, okay, or hundreds of students, pass their NCLEX licensure. And also, I am a nursing faculty at this time for a nursing program, where I also help students pass their uh, nursing program, of course. And also, I am the author of a book that I published in Amazon. And the title of the book is Simple, Fast, and Easy NCLEX Review Book that you can purchase in Amazon. And it's now available in the Philippines as well in black and white. And you can email Matus Nursing Review Academy at gmail.com to order the book. Okay, at this time, the book has a five star rating in Amazon. And thank you very much, everyone, for those who uh, gave a shout out or who gave a uh, review of the book, um, really telling us that the book is really helping them pass their NCLEX licensure, okay? So grab my book, everybody. You can find that in Amazon and those in the comment section also. Please uh, tell us what is your comment about, about the book as well. So again, the title of the book is Simple, Fast, and Easy NCLEX Review Book. Okay, now, before anything else as well, I would like to announce Okay, our upcoming schedule for the 10-day live comprehensive NCLEX review, uh, the webinar. So, which is going to be on July 24 to September 25, 2021. That will be from 8 to 4 p.m. Saturday class. That will be Pacific Standard Time. Uh, this is an interactive online NCLEX review to master your nursing core content. So, for example, if you are an international graduate or U.S. Uh, educated nurse, um, a graduate, uh, a long time ago, 10 years ago, or 20 years ago, or you're a new graduate as well, this review program is all about giving you the nursing core content that you need for the NCLEX. So it's a comprehensive review. It's all about content, content, content that will help you pass your NCLEX and uh, content uh, that you will be able to use uh, when you answer questions, especially critical thinking questions. Okay, but anyway, uh, so that's the uh, that's the uh, review program that we have, which uh, which is going to start in July 24. So for more information, just visit our website Matus Nursing Review Academy at gmail.com. Okay. All right. So also for tonight, we have still the same thing: the free 90-day online access NCLEX review. So this will be for 90 days. Uh, whoever is uh, making comments in the comment section. Uh, after this uh, Facebook Live, we're going to uh, announce the winner again, okay? So let's find out who will be the winner for tonight's drawing. And of course, okay, so um, if you have time, please uh, share this Facebook Live or uh, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Um, that's going to help a lot of uh, your other nursing students as well who are preparing for this NCLEX uh, or preparing for their NCLEX review. So please share or you can uh, subscribe to our channel so that uh, more nurses will benefit from this program. Okay, so on the screen, everybody, you can see our website, which is matusnursingreview.com. If you want to go to the online website, that is matusnursingreviewacademy.com. And for our email, you can see that on the screen as well, it's info at matusnursingreview.com. So if you need more information, you can email us, everyone. And also behind me, you can see in the screen, on the screen, you can see the 
the workbook. Okay, so that's the workbook, everyone. You can see that. Uh, um, that comes with a package. You know, if you, if the, the online review access only is separate package, the workbook must be um, purchased separately. So I would just like to let everybody know that, you know, that uh, the online access is a different pricing and then the workbook is also a different pricing, everyone. So you have to purchase the workbook separately. So we have students who only purchase the online, but if you want to purchase the workbook at this time, the workbook is $94.50. And you can also find the link in our website to purchase the, the workbook if you want to have that together with your online review. So some of our students who are doing the subsidy program are just doing the online access only or the subscription. But some students also bought the, uh, the workbook, which is $94.50. So uh, again, I would just like to let everybody know, just for clarification, that the workbook is not included in the online subscription when you, when you go online and uh, subscribe. So please read carefully the, uh, the, uh, the details of the enrollment, okay? Because you might be thinking that the workbook is included, but it is not included in the purchase. You have to purchase that separately so that we can mail that to you, okay? All right, so let's have the first question for tonight, everyone. So if everybody uh, has no question, okay um let's see are you ready for our first question everybody again the topic for tonight starts with letter um m and that's going to be your musculoskeletal system okay so let's see um your stock knowledge when it comes to musculoskeletal system everyone so the first question is as usual we have priority questions so lately we have been uh, focusing on having four patients and you need to prioritize which patient should be seen first. Now, also we're receiving a lot of feedbacks from our NCLEX passers that they do receive prioritization questions and this session really helps them a lot in preparation for the NCLEX. So I'm really very happy about that guys, that this one, that this uh, session that we're doing is really making a difference. And of course it's making you, re you uh, realize that, uh, that uh, you have to change the way you think when it comes to and class examination, especially using your critical thinking and the process of uh, elimination as well, okay? So for those who enroll in our program, um, you will be able to access all the recordings in our online NCLEX Academy, okay? So you'll be able to access all the recordings of this session, okay? But this session is free for everyone. This Facebook Live, anybody who, um, who uh, visits our page, can join this session. And of course, right now, this is our session 60, okay? Session 60 for the Facebook Live, okay? We don't know until this is going to be, but hopefully we can do this every week, but sometimes we do get busy. So we'll see how it goes, everybody, because sometimes we have to cancel, but then as much as possible, we do this every week, okay? For everyone, and this is no payment, okay? So this is free of charge for everyone, okay? All right, but to access our recordings, you have to be a member of Online NCLEX Academy. All right, so let's proceed to our first question for tonight. Okay, so the first question for tonight, I'll read the question everyone, okay? That's going to be, uh, the nurse receives the following clients in the orthopedic unit, which client should be seen first? Okay, A, the 45-year-old client who requires stump care after a left leg above the knee amputation. B, the 62-year-old who client who will ambulate for the first time after a hip replacement surgery. C, the 36-year-old client who needs range of motion exercises while in skeletal traction. Or D, the 52-year-old client who is scheduled for a bivalving procedure of a left leg cast. So again, the question is, So we have a comment uh, in the comment section, the workbook included in the self-study review. Again, I just explained to everyone the details of your enrollment. Okay, look back, self-study program is only self-study online subscription. The workbook is a separate purchase. So please visit our website and see all the instructions about your purchase, everybody. Thank you. So again, I'll read a question. The nurse receives the following clients in the orthopedic unit 
Which client should be seen first? A. The 45-year-old client who requires thumb care after a left leg above the knee amputation. B. The 62-year-old client who will ambulate for the first time after a hip replacement surgery. C. The 36-year-old client who needs range of motion exercises while in skeletal traction. D. The 52-year-old client who is scheduled for a bivalving procedure of a left leg cast. Okay, so put your answer, everyone. Okay. Everyone, put your answer. Okay, read the question carefully, okay? Make sure that you put also the rational for the answers, okay, to the questions, guys. Make sure of that. Put the rational for the uh for the answers that you're putting guys so that at least everybody will know okay all right and then okay so what do you think is the answer let's see okay let's see okay all right so what do you think so we have different answers i guessed Okay, so let's see the people who answered A, B, C, or D. Let's see. Okay. All right. So put your final answer, everyone. I would just like to give a shout out to the first person that came in tonight. Menti Orbi Marabilia. So the first five people who came in was Menchi, followed by Carrie, Amaka, and Vibrant. So we have Menchi, Kerry, Amaka, Vibrant, and Chaidi. Okay, Chaidi. Okay, so we have those five people. So thank you for being here very early. Okay, all right. So the answer to this question, guys, let's try to find out what's going on in this question. Okay, is it A, B, C, or D? Okay, let's see. All right, so in answering this question, you have to review the uh, basic complications uh, in different musculoskeletal injuries and that would involve uh, um, injuries uh, especially uh, involving circulation or pressure so let's reveal the answer everyone and I will explain the rational so the answer everybody those who got it right that would be letter D everyone okay so letter D is the answer guys um, why letter D because if you go back uh, by valving is a procedure wherein the cast is being split into two in order to relieve pressure. So the fact that letter D is a client who needs by valving procedure, it means that there's pressure, pressure, too much pressure because of the cast. And we all know that too much pressure can cause um, possibly your compartment syndrome so the cast must be split into two to relieve the pressure and what is compartment syndrome that is a common complication of uh, uh, fracture or cast application because of external pressure and that causes too much pressure that uh, causes damage to the nerves and obstruction in circulation and we all know that compartment syndrome is characterized by the presence of the six letter P's, okay, if you can review, uh, if you can remember the six letter P's that indicate neurovascular compromise. So you have your pain, especially in compartment syndrome, you have severe pain, pal uh, pallor, you have pulsesness, poikilothermia, um, paralysis, and paresthesia. Um, so letter D is a priority because this could be a patient who immediately needs to have a bivalving procedure in order to relieve pressure or else the patient will uh, lose his extremity or develop disability or complication. So that's why it is a priority. Your letter A, everyone, letter A, uh, the 45 year old client who requires thumb care after a left leg above the knee amputation. Thumb care is very important to prevent infection, but at this time, that is not a priority. Your letter B, the client will ambulate for the first time. Of course, we need to see the patient, making sure the patient is safe. However, it's not a priority. Your letter C, the 36-year-old client who needs range of motion exercises, not as important as your letter D, everyone. So congratulations. Okay, very good. So now, let's go to the second question, everyone. Okay. 
So I will read the question. The nurse is assigned to care for clients, for four clients who have musculoskeletal injuries. Which client requires immediate attention? A. The 25-year-old 25 year old client who has limited range of motion due to a transverse tibial fracture on x-ray. B. The 43-year-old client who complains of numbness of the toes while in box traction. C. The 53-year-old client with carpal tunnel syndrome who reports a tingling sensation while flexing the right wrist. Or letter D. The 61-year-old client who continues to have a swollen ankle two days after sustaining a sprain. Okay. Again, let's uh, repeat reading the question. All right. So let's read the question again. The nurse is assigned to care for four clients who have musculoskeletal injuries, which client requires immediate attention. A. The 25-year-old client who has limited range of motion due to a transverse tibial fracture on the x-ray. B. The 43-year-old client who complains of numbness of the toes while in back structure. C. The 53-year-old client with carpal tunnel syndrome who reports a tingling sensation while flexing the right wrist. Or D. The 61-year-old client who continues to have a swollen ankle two days after sustaining a sprain. Okay. Although your carpal tunnel syndrome may not really be a musculoskeletal injury, your carpal tunnel syndrome is more of a neurologic uh, neurologic uh, injury. Okay. So let's see. A, B, C, or D, guys. I think most of you say you have already the answers. Okay. So the answer to this question, everyone, is going to be, let's see. So what do you think is the answer to this question? Which patient is uh, having a serious situation? Okay. So the question seems to be very direct to the point, guys. You all got the right answer. Very good. So that will be letter B. Okay. Why? Because numbness of the toes is one of the six P's. Okay. Six piece of neurovascular assessment when a cast or traction is applied. So box traction is a skin traction and that causes pressure. The feeling of numbness or tingling or paresthesia, paralysis or the presence of pallor, all of this requires further investigation and further intervention to prevent neurovascular compromise. So the answer is going to be letter B because we need immediate intervention because we have to make sure that we do not cause permanent nerve damage or circulatory compromise okay and this can also lead to compartment syndrome so poor circulation very good the answer is going to be letter b why not letter a because uh, limited range of motion could be a possible finding or expected finding to someone with a fracture of course there is c carpal tunnel syndrome you have your tingling sensation that is expected because in carpal tunnel syndrome is characterized by your failing sign when you flex the wrist that causes uh, paresthesia or tingling and numbness on the wrist of your patient. So that is expected. Um, something that we need to be worried about as well, however, is not a priority. At Lardy, the 61-year-old client who continues to have a swollen ankle for two days, um, we need to be worried about that. However, still B comes first. So it seems like everybody is really having a good uh, understanding of gra or grasp of the most important concepts for musculoskeletal system. So very good, guys. Okay. All right. So you may have this in your licensure examination. So very good. But again, always remember, okay, do not memorize the answers. Always read the question carefully in the NCLEX and make sure that you use the process of um, elimination. Okay. All right, so lastly, we will have your delegation question, everyone. Okay, so delegation question. The registered nurse is teamed with a licensed practical nurse to care for a client with a femoral fracture who will be placed on skeletal traction. Which task may be delegated to the LPN? A, clean the pin sites every shift. B, Teach the client on how to perform isometric exercises. C. Provide bedpan for elimination needs. 
or they perform a neurovascular check after the traction is applied. Okay? The registered nurse is teamed with a licensed practical nurse to care for a client with a femoral fracture who will be placed on skeletal traction, which task may be delegated to the LPN. A. A. Clean the pin sites every shift. B. Teach the client on how to perform isometric exercises. C. Provide bedpan for elimination needs. Or D. Perform a neurovascular check after the traction is applied. Okay? What do you think is the best answer, everyone? Which task may be delegated to the LPN? All right. A, clean the pin size every shift. B, teach the client on how to perform isometric exercises. C, provide bedpan for elimination needs. Or D, perform a neurovascular check after the traction is applied. So the answer is going to be, okay, so most of you have same answers. Let's see. Okay. So always remember what will be the best answer. Always choose the best, okay? You only need to... Uh, answer okay pick one answer in this question so in this question okay it does not mention uap it only mentions uh, delegation to the lpn so let's see what's going to be the answer everyone very good everybody most of you got it it's going to be letter a so in this question uh cleaning the pin sites every shift is within the scope of practice of the lpn wound care okay using sterile technique that is within the scope for the LPN practice, right? So always remember that. Your letter B is for the RN, of course, teaching, okay? Although the LPN can reinforce the teaching later on or assist the patient, but initially it should be the RN teaching the patient. Your letter C, providing the bedpan for elimination needs, the LPN can do that but between A and C, it makes sense that letter A is the best for the LPN, okay? Now, letter C, it's best to be delegated to the UAP, okay? Because uh, ADLs, assisting and elimination, that would be for the uh, UAP, okay? Now, letter D, perform your vascular check after the traction is applied. That would be your RN because initial assessment should always be done by the RN, especially after a procedure. So that's why the answer is going to be letter D, everybody. Okay? Uh, no, letter A, sorry. Okay, so very good. Uh, thank you for some of the uh, rationals. I think that uh, now and forever, I think. Okay, Orman. Okay, so you got the right rational there because B and D are for RN and then C is for UAP. Very good rational. Thank you. Okay? All right. So let's have the last question, everyone. So in the next few sessions, we will try our best to give you more questions. Okay? All right. So the last question that we have, the previous question that we have, some people answered letter C. So make sure you learn from your mistakes, guys. Okay? Don't jump right away to letter C in that question. Now, last question. Which task may be delegated to the licensed practical nurse by the registered nurse in the orthopedic unit? So we have delegation tonight all for the LPN, okay? So which task may be delegated? A, reposition the client after a recent hip surgery. B, apply cold compress on a sprained elbow. C, obtain vital signs of a client suspected of having fat embolism. D, assess peripheral circulation after fasciotomy of the leg, okay? Which task may be delegated to the licensed practical nurse, LPN, by the registered nurse in the orthopedic unit? A. Reposition the client after a recent hip surgery. B. Apply cold compress on a sprained elbow. C. Obtain vital signs of a client suspected of having fat embolism. Or D. Assess peripheral circulation after fasciotomy of the leg. Okay? So some people answered A, some answered B, some answered C, some answered their D, okay? All right? Okay, so the answer is going to be A. 
So put your rational guys. I would like to, okay. And I would like to give a shout out to the following people: Iano, Nemes, Rifa, Tiha, Tahira, Fresel Pas, Dagdag Pas, Gian Torres, Noel Burgos, Molo Hadera, Darla Garcia, Garcia Leyan. We also have uh, Benedicta. Hi, Benedicta. How are you? I still have to respond to your uh, message today. Uh, Yoshika Singh, Pratik Sapatel, uh, Chika Anya. Okay. Carrie Ann Gordon. Hi, Carrie. Thank you for your message the last time. I really appreciate that as well. Olubunni Balofin. Uh, Olubunni, I sent you an email today as well. So please uh, check your email about your question. Mai Mai. Hi, Mai Mai. How are you? Uh, one of my great students. Mai Mai. Okay. Halimat Alimi. Victor Jan Peter Galangam. Dayan Bolido. Okay. All right, so the answer to this question, everyone. Okay, so most of you answered letter. The answer is going to be letter B, guys. No, very good. So some of you answered letter A or letter C. The answer is going to be letter B. Okay, why? Because this is within the scope of practice of the LPN to apply whole compress. Okay, so letter A, letter B is the answer. Okay, all right. A is not the answer. Why? Because repositioning the client should be done by the RN, especially after a recent hip surgery. Remember the two letter S's, okay, when delegating to the LPN. Two letter S's. Uh, it should be within the scope of practice, and at the same time, it should be a stable patient. Delegating to the UAP has three letter S's. It has to be within the scope of practice. It has to be uh, scope of practice. It has to be a uh, uh, stable patient. And lastly, it has to be a simple routine task only. So again, for the LPN, that would be uh, within the scope of practice, scope and stable patient. When delegating to the UAP, it has to be uh, within the scope of practice, stable and simple task only okay so letter a is for the rn because why recent hip surgery okay so that would be unstable patient anybody who's newly admitted somebody who can just so who just came back after a surgery is unstable so the uh, lpn can reposition the uap can reposition however the best is it's gonna have to be the rn there now your letter c Obtain vital signs. Yes, of course. The UAP and the LPN can obtain vital signs. Okay. However, this is a client suspected of having a fat embolism, which is characterized by shortness of breath, um, desaturation. Okay. So, uh, unstable patient again. So, the best person to take the vital signs of any unstable patient should be the RN. Okay. Now, letter D. Um, Peripheral circulation, that's assessment. So that would be for the RN, especially the fact that it is after a fasciotomy of the leg. And you have to review what fasciotomy is, everyone, because that is a procedure to, that involves incising the, the fascia in order to um, relieve pressure and improve circulation, okay? Or breathing of your patient, so fasciotomy. Now, everyone, okay, remember this, we always go back also to our main principle where in RNs do not delegate it. Evaluation, assessment, and teaching. Okay? RN should always be the one, always be the one doing the initial teaching or the complete teaching. The UAP or rather the LPN can reinforce teaching. Okay? So the answer to this question, guys, is going to be. All right, letter, uh, I think that was letter B, cold compress, okay? All right, so before anything, everyone, hopefully you can put your scores, okay? So for tonight, I would like to give also a shout out to our online NCLEX Academy. So we have the self-study program and we have the live webinar as well. So again, the workbook, the workbook 
is separate okay you can enroll in our subscription program for three months that would be i think 139 at this time so there's a three months six months and 12 months online access only if you want to get the workbook you can also get the workbook so you can find the link also in our classroom everyone okay so if you're reviewing our program okay some of the uh the features of our program everybody will be the fact that we have an interactive core content review highly organized and up-to-date test plan based curriculum you may buy the nclex workbook if you want to go together with your own online review uh, study plan checklist we have hundreds of uh, nclex quizzes after each topic so we have uh, a total of hundreds of NCLEX quizzes. We have the final NCLEX predict predictor exam. So we have two of those. Uh, Facebook live video recordings and our discussion group, Facebook discussion group. So please visit our website, matusnursingreview.com, or if you want to go to the online academy, you can visit matusnursingreviewacademy.com. And you can also see our email on the screen, everyone. Okay? And also, I'll be answering comments or questions in the comment section later on. So please uh, check your messages there. Um, also, if you want to always think positive, we have a lot of products for you guys. Uh, our merchandise store. So we have the uh, water bottle, okay, that says I can do it. I've seen some students sending me uh, pictures of this. I'm going to post them next time. We have sweaters and everything. So just visit our website, guys and uh, let us know okay you can also give us a review and of course lastly everyone congratulations last week to our mini savage raji he was a winner of the 90 day online access nclex review so please congratulate our mini savage raji everyone okay all right guys so thank you very much again for being here tonight i hope you learned something so for next week hopefully we can add more questions we have a special request from a student today but we will see everyone okay researching questions is not that easy okay it takes a while okay anybody everybody thank you very much and i will see you next week i hope you learned something and wait for our winner for tonight after this session and i'll see you again and study hard and keep sending me those thank yous and appreciation because that really makes me more motivated to provide you a good program in the online NCLEX Academy. Okay, and congratulations to our recent passers for the NCLEX. Some of them took three times, four times, five times. Some are new graduates and I'm really very happy that our program is making a difference. Thank you everyone and have a good night guys.